Thank you everyone for joining here, uh, second at the NAB. I'm Johan Ina, Chief Operation Officer at Whitby, and I'm very pleased to be here with you uh, at last after this many uh, shows that were postponed, and so glad to be able to be here together. Today, uh, I will discuss with you about the sling box, uh, and especially how it has been used by the industry over the time. So, just one word about uh, Whitby before we are drilling down in the subject. Uh, we are a company specialized in test automation and monitoring products, uh, and we reproduce end user interaction on any kind of video devices in order to automate the testing and provide the monitoring for all the video services. So, <coughs> First, about the sling box. Uh, for those of, of you who don't know, uh, what was it? Initially, it was an end user grade device. So that means it was really targeted for the end users in order to be able to get your content being streamed when you were not at home. And why was that? It was mostly because of right management. At that time, uh, all the streaming, it was not really multi uh, screen. Uh, we were not talking about OTT, and back in 2005, it was a quite simple way of streaming a video that was received at home uh, back to pretty much anywhere you were at that moment. It was connected to your cable provider set-top box in analog, and you were able to interact with it uh, very simply with a virtual remote control. But the sling box, which had its glory at that time, is not being a discontinued product. It will stop working in November at all. That means all the server uh, infrastructure that was in place uh, will just be removed and discontinued and they will become uh, bricks. Why is it an issue or what it can be an issue for the video industry? Because it was a product that was uh, useful at that time, but now that all the streaming services are uh, by design uh, multi screen, uh, non linear, and linear, why would there be any usage of this kind of product? It's because the industry engineers, techs managed to hijack this product to be used for operations, testing, and a lot of different uh, usage. And that's what we will be discussing today what kind of usage it was hijacked for. And because you guys are creative and uh, you always find some new ways of using a product that was designed for something else. So it's totally natural and um, we like this kind of creativity. So just uh, one thing about what I will be discussing today. Uh, at Whitby, we released a product which is called the Whitbox that is kind of a sling box on steroids. It has the HDMI input to connect to any kind of set-top box. So uh, OTT devices, Apple TV, uh, Fire TV, or any kind of cable uh, or telco grade uh, set-top boxes, but with much more features like automation, 4K, Bluetooth, voice control. And we'll see some example of how it can be used. And uh, we can showcase some of the usage at our booth right there after the presentation. But now let's focus on what kind of uh, usage was in place or is in place up until November for the sling boxes in the field. So one very big usage is for telcos or cable companies who have a lot of add-ins spread around the country and they are manufacturing some local channels which are only available at certain locations. And for that, when they uh, change the channel lineup, when they have an incident, uh, it's a pain to have to send someone on site, sometime at a very far and remote location. Uh, we have some customers who have to drive hours in order to go to a specific locations. And this kind of remote viewing capability to have uh, your network operation center or the level two, level three support, being able to remotely take control of a device 
somewhere at a local Eden uh, was used a lot, either for linear TV uh, services, but also for all the nonlinear um, and other checks like dynamic ad insertion, which are done uh, locally at the head end or uh, locally sourced uh, channels. So a great uh, replacement and uh, some additional features that can come uh, with the with be robot would be to, instead of having to connect to it and do actively the checks, use the automation feature in order to cycle through the channels automatically. So in that case, by having and leveraging this uh, network of deployed uh, with box, you can also directly be proactively alerted when there is a channel that goes in black or to check the emergency alert system, for example, to make sure that it's properly uh, streamed on all the different regions and locations. Everything recorded, alerts, and after you're good to go without having to uh, manually connect and remote in. So one example of a, a very common use case. Another one is kind of similar, but it's the other way around. Here, uh, you know that with a lot of the different uh, devices that need to be supported, so the different version, flavors, operating systems, uh, all it can really be a nightmare uh, if you want to have people working from home. Because you will ask, uh, this particular uh, level to support. Okay, um, can you double check for me that it's working fine on the LG TV that you just uh, that we just updated because LG pushed an update on their firmware and for some reason our version is not working anymore. Our application is not working anymore on LG. And obviously, uh, you cannot have each and every person working from home having one LG, one Samsung, uh, one Tizen, one. Uh, set a box of each flavor. Of course, they can have a Fire TV stick or something like that, but having all the different subsets of uh, devices at home uh, make it very, uh, very hard. So having this kind of centralized device farm dedicated for the usage of the different teams, uh, especially around operations and supports, uh, is also another example of how to leverage the remote control capability uh, while uh, having your team spread around the country. And once it's deployed, why not use it to test all the automatically the different end user journey, like can I log in, can I launch the application, and can I play a content automatically so that when Apple is releasing a new OS version or when uh, Samsung is releasing a new uh, pricing system version, you can know before your customer complains, even though it's supposed to be not your responsibility, in the end, uh, it, can't, it comes on your lap when it's not working. If we take that a bit further, we have also seen a lot of uh, companies who are leveraging nearshore and offshore partners in order to do manual testing. But manual testing, you can go up until a specific way by just using a VPN or networking or thing like that. Sometimes, if you need to test a device, you need to test it in territory. So let's take, for example, if you want to, to test the Disney Plus application running on the Comcast uh, box, you need to have a Comcast cable box. And for that, doing the testing, if you want to do it uh, in another country, which is not the US, obviously you won't get the cable subscription from Comcast in another country. So being able to uh, remotely connect in in order to run the manual test, in addition to the test that can be run automatically and all the automation, that's also a great way to leverage the different partnership that you can have uh, with the different teams. And we have seen a lot of demands around it because even though we are in the field of test automation, we know that uh, some of the uh, early stage testing or some of the specific features like translations or this kind of QA uh, is also relaying a lot of manual uh, eyes on glass. So a good combination of the two uh, can be easily achieved 
even if the team is spread around uh, worldwide. And here, what you can see is the automation feature to also uh, leverage the time that when you don't have manual users using the product, uh, you can also have performance monitoring, uh, stability checks, robustness, to make sure that the different versions are working fine throughout the large number of uh, testing which is being done. Because manually, you cannot scale so easily. You can do one test, 10 tests, 100 times a test, but you won't go up at until 1,000 if you were to go that way, which is what is required if you want to measure the performance, performance evolution, performance variation between two versions, or the stability. If you have one out of 1,000 visualization, viewing session that crash on your application, and you have a small decrease, and now it's two out of 1,000 or three out of 1,000, by just doing the manual testing, there is no way you can qualify that. So having the robot performing the repetitive task while the uh, intelligent testers are sleeping can be a great usage of the whole deploy platform to make sure that you have your quality under control for all the versions. And ultimately, what we've seen also as an initial Slingbox usage, but uh, which was very important is how to give access to my device to third party developer. So you may have been in this kind of situation. You have a third party developer or you are a third party developer who have to develop on a device that you don't have at home. Exactly like you need to develop the um, HBO Max application but that needs to work on the uh, Cox set-top box or on the SHA set-top box that will be in Canada. Your development team may be in the US, they might, you might have some team uh, spread out in the Europe, uh, in Asia, and how can they develop an efficient product without having the end user device at end? Because it's very easy to provide them a um, smartphone with the right uh, maybe a VPN, so they may not have the right level of performance, but a legacy cable set-top box, there is no way you can get that uh, in their home. So being able to develop and see how the fix are being applied is key. Uh, we have had a discussion with some uh, with developers in that kind of situation, and they were literally uh, phoning one of their colleagues and say, okay, can you Skype me and uh, can you film uh, what's happening on the screen? Because I'm not sure that I was able to uh, fix it properly. So the, um, having a way to directly connect in and remote in a specific device which is, which is in territory can be really key to, um, to finding, a, just finding the, the fix easier and uh, having a product that will uh, launch to market faster. And also spending less time in all this back and forth, which is uh, useless for everyone. So here, we saw a few examples, but after it's really uh, up to you and what you have seen in the field of how you have been able to use either the remote in from the Slingbox feature, which will come to an end in November, and in all the deployment that we've done, so this kind of small box, in addition to what the Slingbox is providing, has also all the newest features, so uh, compatible with 4K, Bluetooth, remote control, voice control, uh, is, it's able to speak to the setup box in order to do all kind of uh, different use cases, plus all the automation feature, and with the wide range of support of smart TV setup boxes, OTT devices, smartphone, and tablets. I thanks, thank you everyone for attending this session. Uh, we won't do a live Q and A session uh, due to the the schedule, but I'm available right after. If you have any question, or you can come by the booth, I will be happy to showcase what can be done and uh, see how we can help you. Uh, manage this uh, challenge.